Today, we're taking a look at the Eosheen VTX-03S, the first smart audio micro VTX from Eosheen. Let's take a look. The packaging itself is very modest, which I am a fan of on small products to help keep the cost low. Inside, we get the video transmitter protected in foam, and underneath that, the instruction sheet. The instruction sheet shows the wiring configuration, lists the current consumption at the various output levels, shows how to operate the transmitter via the buttons, and lists the available channels. Looking at the video transmitter, it maintains the size and weight of Yashin's other micro transmitters, but it is the first to incorporate smart audio. This means that all of the video transmitter settings can be changed via the Betaflight OSD with some minor setup. The video transmitter itself supports all frequencies except E4, E7, and E8, and it can broadcast at powers of 25, 50, 100, and 200 milliwatts. I personally like seeing more low power options available, as 200 milliwatts is overkill for a lot of flying, and lower power means lower operating temperatures. The video transmitter also supports pit mode, which means that the transmitter broadcasts at a very low output power. This is commonly used in a racing setting so that your video transmitter doesn't interfere with other pilots when it's turned on, but can also be set up to activate when your model is disarmed. This means that when your quad is sitting before or after a flight, or even after a crash, the transmitter stays nice and cool and is unlikely to overheat. The transmitter does use a UFL connection for the antenna, which is less than ideal, but it is par for the course on these micro video transmitters. The wires are direct soldered to the transmitter and they're covered in a bit of this reinforcement goop to help keep them attached. The wiring is straightforward. The two thicker red and black wires supply power to the VTX, which only accepts a 3.3 to 5 volt input. The green wire is Smart Audio, which will be connected to a free UART TX pad on your flight controller. If you are powering your camera with the transmitter, the next two wires will supply 5 volts. And finally, the yellow wire is the video input. This will go to the OSD pad on your flight controller. The included connector on the end of these wires doesn't match any camera that I own, so you'll likely need to remove it. Once connected, the setup in Betaflight is easy. You simply go to the Ports tab, identify the UR that you connected the Smart Audio cable to, and turn on TBS Smart Audio under the Peripherals column. Leave the speed set to Auto. If you don't have a free UR, Soft Serial can also be used. This then is all you need to get the basic Smart Audio working in Betaflight. To confirm it's working, enter the Betaflight menu, scroll to Features, VTX Smart Audio, and then from here you can change your settings. So under Power we see 25, 200, 500, and 800. This is because Betaflight only has these values in the menu, however it corresponds to the power levels of the VTX. So 800 would represent 200 milliwatts, 500 is 100 milliwatts, 200 is 50 milliwatts, and 25 is 25 milliwatts. To change a setting, change it in the menu, go to Set, Confirm, Yes, and you'll see the power level has now changed on the VTX. If we change the band, and Set, you can see the video transmitter changes frequencies. To start, I went for a quick flight at 25 milliwatts. I did this to see what range I could get at that power level, and I also wanted to see what the breakup pattern was like. However, as you can see, breakup was fairly minimal, even up past 100 meters. I did a few flips, flew low to the ground and grass, and overall was quite impressed, even at only 25 milliwatts. To finish it off, I went behind this willow tree here, and this is the first time we see any real breakup. However, this is perfectly normal and nothing to be too bothered by. So, with that performance, I went for a quick run at 100 milliwatts. This time it went a little bit further, flew a little closer to these trees, and again, reception holds fairly well.
In a second here, I'll pass behind this willow tree again, and you'll see that there is still a little bit of break up here, but it's perfectly fine to fly through. This position here is actually behind me due to the way I was standing, so this is fully on the stubby Omni antenna that I was using, which makes it a little bit more impressive. So following that, I push it out as far as I can go here, which is around 250 meters. I keep the quad level, as this is the first test, but I don't see any cause for concern here either. Finally, to finish it off, I do a little bit of freestyle, still at 100 milliwatts. I wanted to force a little bit of breakup just to see what it looked like. I push the distance to around 250 meters at times, do some flips and rolls, go high up, stay low to the ground. The only bad breakup I get is towards the end of the flight here, when I'm about 100 meters behind me and I've got the willow tree in between. Even then, it wasn't that bad. You can see I fly out of it just fine. So, with all of that said, I'm thoroughly impressed by this VTX can absolutely recommend it at the price. In fact, I'll be highly considering it for all my future builds. I'll let the rest of the flight play out here. Thank you for watching, I hope you've enjoyed it, and if you have, please consider subscribing and liking the video. Thank you.